You're going to watch me undress today. Mostly because it's after midnight and oh, I'm tired. So if I take time to undress and do all the other stuff, I might not have the desire. I just realized how loud that is. I might have. Sorry, neighbors. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, DreamWorks is a very under underappreciated studio. One of my favorite movies from childhood growing up, The Road to El Dorado. Oh, it's, a, it's an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it before, just take some time to check that out. Who made it? Uh, and if you have seen it before, just take some time to watch it again and just appreciate it, you know? One of, and it's also got an amazing soundtrack made by Elton John and uh, Hans Zimmer. Two of the best ever. So, yeah. Feel free to check that out. You know what I've been listening to on repeat for the past two weeks? Uh, ugh. Someday Out of the Blue. It's an Elton John song. It's the, like, it's, it's a theme song, I guess. For the, it's for the Rotel Dorado. It's kind of like, it's, can you feel the love tonight? That's what, what that is for Lion King. That's what this is for this. It's the big love song. And honestly, it's kind of a bittersweet song. Because, I mean, even though it's said in a happy tone, it's still a song about having to say goodbye. It's a song that's like, hey... No, this relationship is over or whatever. We can't, like, we're not together right again. Like, it's it's ending, but, you know, he's saying it in a happy way that, like, I still believe, I still have faith in us, and, you know, we're not where we want to be right now, but one day, you know, maybe years from now or tomorrow night, I'll turn and I'll see you, and... As if we all always knew, someday we would live again, someday soon. I ended up just quoting the damn song. But I mean, how else can you explain it other than that? It's, it's a bittersweet song. It's about saying goodbye and the pain of saying goodbye. But somehow he's able to say it happily because he knows it's not really the end. It's goodbye for now. And I don't know why, but like... That feeling has kind of been strong within me. And so, for the past two weeks, I mean, I can't say I haven't heard any other songs, but, like, that's the only song I listen to when I'm at home or, like, when I walk to go run an errand. But at work, at least, I'll let, I'll let the playlist go. And then, like, when I leave, I'll pull my tablet out and just, you know, put Someday Out of the Blue on and put Repeat One. And just, that'll be the only thing I hear until I go back to walk again. Because I have no problem listening to that song every day, all day, for two weeks. But, you know, my co-workers, you know, two or three hours, they might not be able to appreciate it that much. Just listen to that one song on repeat for three hours in a row. That being said, like, I'm a different breed than a lot of people. If I love a song, especially if that's just the mood right now, like, I think the one, my record is Big Time Rush when I heard Worldwide for the first time. Three months. Like, I bought the song and then, for three months, that was literally the only music I would listen to. That was the only song I would hear. But, yeah, I think, Sunday Out of the Blue, for those who don't know, man, listen to it. It's, I can't say it's underappreciated, but I think it's underserved. I think more people need to know about it and need to hear it. It's one of those, it's one of those, it's a goodbye song, but not a sad goodbye. It's more like, all right, see you later, I hope, kind of thing. Like, it's like I said, it's bittersweet. It is, it does feel weird at times. And, but, like, the main reason I've been listening to it is because don't worry, I'll explain the giant fan later. I've been listening to... Ah, what the fuck? 
uh, had a one of these just went right into my eye, slipped right past the glasses into the eye and poked me. I got poked in the eye by my own hair. You saw it live. I, want, I wonder if you can slow down this video and see it. But uh, my hair is evil. But yeah, it's an underappreciated song, and it's it's a good goodbye song. And kind of like, like the only one I'd say that did it better was be Anastasia at the beginning with Richard Marx and Donna Lewis. That's one thing I was thinking of. It, that Well, that's one thing that this song kind of made me think of. Because like, I was listening to this song because I was finishing up my story. Um... Yeah, it's because I wrote a new story. I don't know if I, I don't want to talk about it too much in depth, but it's a story starring a high school girl. It's just like kind of normal coming of age TV show thing. Season one ended up being 27 episodes. And then after that seasons four through two through five, like I really kind of just have like one or two pages describing like overall, these are the storylines that each character experiences kind of thing. But, and then when that was done, I realized that the main character kind of went through, like, fit, her storyline was about 50% identical to another story, the, to the back story for a character I had on another TV show, so I thought, you know, because I kind of, I loved this show when I first made it in high school, but not as much now, and so... When I went back to look at it again, and I'm like, oh, it's like 50% identical to this character. And I was like, okay, well, we'll replace you with her and end up rewriting this one. It was originally eight se nine seasons, and as I rewrote it, I think, you know, after the first three or five seasons, I already had used up the entire series of storylines pretty much and had to revamp it somewhat. But then I got to the end, I was making season 8, and I had a plan for what I would see in season 9, but I'm realizing a lot of the storyline that I have, that I'm thinking of for season 9, it's not really full season story, it would be, like I just didn't want to stretch it out that much, and so I was like, okay, we'll make it like a two episode finale, and that's that'll be... And the stuff that I would have been in season 9 will just use it to like, oh, wrap up this story as a whole. But as I'm writing the final story, it just kind of... It was bittersweet. Because it's over. And it's weird, because I've only really been working on this for... It's been at least a few weeks, maybe a couple months, but... I'm trying to remember when I the exact moment I started writing it. At the time, I didn't think it would be this big a project or this big a deal. But, you know, even though in real time it's only been a few weeks, like, in that time, I kind of watched someone live, like, a decade of her life. Watched her grow from this, like, bright-eyed but clueless teen, just kind of, eh, making her way through the day best she could, to now, like, this grown woman who's kind of going off to live a life, have adventures, and it made me sad to say goodbye to that, to know that, like, I won't get to see how it ends, and that I won't get to see, like, oh, get married, have kids, and all that other stuff, and I'm, and you might be thinking, like, you're the guy writing it, aren't you, why can't you just, like, write that part, but here's the problem with that. Now, Hiro Yui once said, the only way to live a good life is to act on your emotions, and my emotions told me that this is where the story ends. I mean, her life doesn't end, her story goes on, but we don't have a right to see it. I don't know. It's something... It's something you can, I can only... I can't explain it any better than that, so if you don't get it, then it's because you probably never felt it, but sometimes you just know it's the end. And I was, because I'm done with therapy right now. I canceled my Better Help membership. And I'm going to cancel Amazon Prime on Monday. Just, but I, I have a couple more things I want to get through. 
because I'm in. I'm. I had to stop halfway through Batman: Return of the Cape Crusaders, which, if you haven't seen that, check that shit out. Like, if you're if you're just a big Batman fan, like it's, they 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 made a movie with the old school, the, an old school Batman cartoon. Just, anyways. Uh, so yeah, a lot of things are changing, and I think that's why, you know, finishing that story was kind of bittersweet, and I, I can't stop listening to that song, but I think the song I do need to listen to more is At The Beginning, because I think that's one thing a lot of us need to learn in life, just, just because it's the end of one journey doesn't, like, it doesn't mean your life's over. In fact, I was working on a rap song, which I'm not a rapper, we all know this, but I think one of the lyrics, if I can find it, you know, the only end is death, so as long as you draw breath, then you've got time left. And, you know, just remember, and I'm trying to remember, you know, Anastasia, the, how the movie ended with, you know, Sophie being like, Oh, what the perfect ending! And then, and, and then grandmother going, No, it's a perfect beginning. So just try, I'm trying to keep that in mind at this point in my life. Because 2020 looks very scary. I'm going to be honest, 2020 feels scary to me. And it's coming so soon, and I feel like... One way or another, my life's gonna change. I can't guarantee I'll achieve everything I wanted, but, like, changes are happening. You know, for one thing, the book. Oh! Ah, oh, shit. <clears throat> Forgot how much was in here. I really am tired. Got some tuna sandwiches. It's weird. Tuesday was a... Oh, it was a weird night day. <laughs> uh. Well, first of all... I come home from work on Tuesday, right? And I've got like... Dude, I got four packages. Three of them were left on my door, and one of them, I was told, like, oh, uh, we couldn't deliver it because it, it requires a signature. But I, but it's, they, but like, oh, no, the note on the door said it's ready for pickup, so I looked for it. It's online, and it was like, oh, they left it at the Walgreens that I shop at. So I went there. So I wasn't planning to go, honestly. I was going to wait until Monday, but I think... There are times when I wonder if there really is some sort of God up there and he has some sort of specific plan. Because when I got into my apartment, the AC wasn't working. I turned it on, it was making noise and... But like no air was, like half, 20, 30 minutes later, I still wasn't feeling comfortable. So I go up to it and I put my hand up, I'm realizing, there's no air coming out. And so, yeah, I just didn't have AC Tuesday night. Wednesday, like first thing in the mor morning, I went and told them. They came to check it out. And they said they just have to buy a replacement. And they say, oh, it'll either be tomorrow or Friday. Of course, it was Friday. Thankfully, though, like they gave me this giant ass fan that you see right here. It's Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, spill my drink. It's just water, so it won't stain. Right, let's move some of the stuff out of here. But yeah, so, seeing as how I don't have any AC, and I'm not going to be comfortable today anyways, I decided to go ahead and walk to that Walgreens and pick up my book. Everything is impossible. By Nathan Lyle Cunningham. That's right, I have a last name. <laughs> I mean, it's so 
surreal. First of all, now everyone on the fucking planet is going to see my baby pictures. <laughs> but even more importantly, it's just, I wrote a fucking book, dude. Like, what the hell? So, yeah, it's currently being printed, and Eli's walking on the digital version, and I, I can't guarantee this, but my hope would be that, hey, it's done sometime this week, and we put it on the stores and have an official release date, so that next week I can make an official announcement telling you the exact release dates and prices and stuff, and the exact locations that you can get them. Dude, like, I wrote a fucking book. Look, it's got, like, pages with words on them, and I'm, like, I'm flipping it, and I'm, like, I wrote a goddamn book. <clears throat> and so I've got this. You know, we, we're doing... I've got a physical copy. I've got... I've got the digital book, and then I've got the comic book. We've finished the first two books. We're working on the third one now. And so if I have it my way, I'm thinking we've got this one, I'd say I'll schedule it for release in November. And then for the comic book, book one, you know, release book one, volume one in January, volume two in March. That way, you no, know, by the time we get to May, Volume 3 will already be done, and we can release that, too. We'll have a self a semi steady schedule. Like, oh, who is this Nathan Nile guy? He's releasing a new book every other month. And in the meantime, I've actually started working on my first novel. I actually have done research and, looked, and talked to a couple of different firms, looked at different ghostwriters and the potential for that, because I know who I am as a person. I'm not a writer. I know how to write. I'm capable of writing, but... I'm not a writer, and if I'm being honest, it might not be something I want to do for the rest of my life, but it is something I'm capable of doing, and so I'm going to choose to believe in my own abilities for the time being, and we'll see how well this rough draft comes out. I've written a couple of different scenes just kind of to see what I can do, and you know, I ended up, like, I'm doing better when I put my mind to it. I've... I've grown in the past couple years. I'm doing a better job. I like the scene. The book opens with a scene. I spend three paragraphs just describing like the weather and the the building they're in. So I think I can do this. I can't guarantee I'll be able to pull it off, but we'll see. Hopefully this one doesn't take two years, but we'll see. We'll, 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 we're just making a try for it. I'm going to give myself at least six months to finish the rough draft so that'll be because this is the end of september so we'll go august no september october november december january february march so we'll say april by the time april comes around hopefully i'll at least have like m the majority of the rough draft finish if not sooner but we're just gonna we're gonna give it we're going to say April. It's a good start date. Because, I mean, this one, I mean, oh, technically it happened over a nine-month period. But three of those months I dedicated purely to the comic book, which I'm actually going to start working on again. Because, you know, <clears throat> uh, we've got the first three volumes done, and I think I've sent him four and five already. But I've got 13, and so I figure, hey, every time I look at it, I just wanted to stay a little ahead so that they're never asking me, okay, what do we do or whatnot? But then it took a lot longer than I thought. That, that being said, you know, I do, I, every time I look at something, I always want to do better, so... Since I'm not officially working on anything at the moment, I might take some time to to do more like work on some of those other books, get at least a rough draft for the like layouts. I've done some story like the technically the story is written and we've done some basic storyboards, but like specific layout instructions that I still have to do just before and but so yeah, that, that one shouldn't be as much of a problem. Like, I'll, I'll give myself maybe a couple weeks for that. 
but yeah it's a it's this my life have you ever you ever listened to Darius Rucker Darius Rucker history in the making Now, this could be one of those memories we want to hold on to, we want to cling to, the one we can't forget. Baby, this could be our last first kiss, the start to forever. What if this was that moment, that chance worth taking? It would be great to know for sure, can't really say for sure, but it feels different right now. I feel different right now. So, here's to the moment. So yeah, I quit counseling partly because at this specific time, while, the, while, I, while I, I will acknowledge I'm not a perfect person and I should and try to improve, at this moment in time, like my counselor agreed with me, if I'm just not feeling it right now, why waste time and money? And I'm just not feeling it right now. So sometimes you just, even though it can be bittersweet, you gotta know when to say goodbye. So, for now, I'm not doing counseling. And I'm starting next week, I'm gonna curve my spending a little bit. Cause I have, my bank account's been taking hits. I think like five or six straight months, I've definitely spent like twice as much as I actually made. To be fair, not entirely my fault. My restaurant, I, it, it, I can't say it's on the verge of shutdown, but <clears throat> this whole year it's been feeling like it's failing. So, you know, another good incentive to get some of these books out and start making that paper. So, you know, I'm going to do also... I've decided for these next two weeks, I'm going to go back to what I did. Or maybe... Or I mean, well, next week, um, this week, I'm going to do it on Sunday. I'm going to order, get pick up some donuts, order some nachos. I'm going to pick up some donuts on the way back from the grocery shopping, and then I'm going to order some nachos and get, get them delivered. And then after that, you know... Fast food will be a, like, oh, end of the month and I have room in my budget, then sure, I'll get some. But for now, for the time being, I want to work on start building my bank account back up again. It's not necessarily dangerously low, but I have very little leeway left. So I'm going to spend a lot less money. I mean, I bought a bunch of shirts. If you saw my video before, you see I emptied... Uh, quite a few things out of my closet, but last I checked, no one watched that video, so you wouldn't know. But I've definitely, but I picked up a bunch of shirts that, and so I think, like honestly, there's like 30 more that I'd like to get, but I decided I ordered like three more yesterday because I'm already over budget for September, so fuck it, I'm gonna get all my spending out of the way now. I'm a, a one more weekend of splurging, and then it's back to business. But yeah, I think I've got enough shirts. I mean. Look at this stuff. Look at it. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say my collection's complete? Actually, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, for the next month, I'm going to do like two videos a day. Uh, two, a week, I mean. Two videos a week. Two videos a day is way too damn much. But yeah. This week is going to be this video, and then on Friday, the I'm going to just go ahead and release the movie therapist. And then next week, going to probably be another Anson Rambles, and then the nachos that I'm eating tomorrow. That's right, you got to wait two weeks to see me eat nachos. And then after that, I'll do a video, you know, another Anson Rambles, and then a video where I show you all the new shots I've been buying for no other reason than just... Yeah, I wanted to have nostalgic shirts. I mean, I would prefer to shop thrift most of the time, but you don't always find what you're looking for. I mean, sometimes you find what you would have never looked for, which is great, but there are times when you just gotta, like, look for it, you know? Oh, also, I got these new socks, pretty badass. They're from Dickies, which 
every pair of pants I has is Dickies. It's it's performance. Uh, let's see some of these specs. Uh, engineered with moisture control fibers and performance features to provide superior all-day walking comfort. Mesh ventilation channel, ventilation channel and footbed provides air circulation and moisture to control to keep feet dry and comfortable. It's true. It works. Not only do I sweat a lot, like uh, I, when we scrub the floor, I'm stepping in puddles. Sometimes you splash them on yourself or it soaks through the shoe. But I, you know, like my feet, hell, it, it's scary how dry they are. Like I think they need more moisture. It's sucking all the moisture out, man. I need them to walk less curd. Best fit arch compression. Added compression provides added support, stability, and comfortable fit. I can I can attest to the comfortable fit. I really don't know like what arch what arch like support really feels like, so it's hard to say if that's what I'm getting, especially out of a sock. Like I'm not sure what compression feels like, but hey, I can attest to the comfort. It's like. And let's see, reinforced and reciprocated heel and toe provides added durability, which add added durability and superior fit. I don't know about superior fit, but the durability, we'll wait and see. Like, that's my biggest concern. I don't want to spend money on big shit. You know, not sure if it's going to actually last. And full cushioned footbed for added comfort. Yeah, I can attest to that. Mm. Care instructions. Wash before wearing, wearing, did not do that. Uh, turn socks inside out, probably not going to do that. Too much work. I mean, we'll see. I'll try to remember to just, like, as I'm pulling them off, turn them, like, turn them inside out as I'm taking them off my foot. But I can't guarantee I'll remember that. Uh, machine wash with, like, colors, non-chlorine bleach. I don't use bleach when I wash. Tumble dry on medium or line dry. Do not iron. Who irons socks? Does anyone iron their socks? I just, I'm shocked that you would actually have to tell people not to iron socks. What? Is this the 1950s? I mean, we, are we still ironing our socks? What's wrong? What's up with you people? So, Jesus, has it been 30 minutes already? I don't think I started right at 12.30. It's been at least 20, we know for sure. Let's see. Damn, I actually got through everything. I remembered the whole thing. It helps that I had such smooth transitions. I, I know it's supposed to be Rants and Rambles. I did kind of plan this out just a little because I knew that it would be a longer thing. So I tried to plan it out with smoother transitions and stuff, make it easier for you to listen to, and then I could get through all of the subjects. But yeah, this ah uh, my bad hutch. I'm gonna uh, Did you hear that pop? I just leaned back and my back popped. I am getting old. Uh, you know, I at at twenty years old I would never have guessed that thirty felt this old. And then again, I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least one 40-year-old who's looking at me like, Fuck you, okay? okay? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, at five years old, man, a 20-year-old seemed like ancient. No, at five, 20 just seems like forever. But now, 30, 30 years of life. Ah, uh, that's... It doesn't feel like anything. You know, it just... I'm here. I woke up, I was five, and then I woke up, I was 30. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, everything is impossible. Going on sale in October. I will let you know an official release date as soon as I have one. I just love that sound. Like, I have a book with pages I can flip through. I actually accomplished something with my life. 30 years. It only took me 30 years, but I did it. Hey, Carlos Sanders was in his 60s when he started KFC. Wasn't Miyazaki? Didn't make his first movie till he was 60, 50-something, 60 60-something? 
Little House on the Prairie. She was like 70 or something when she wrote her first book. So, hey, compared to them, I'm not doing half bad. It still pisses me off though when you see like a fucking eight year old get a first job and then 20 years later she's Drew Barrymore and she's just like the most one of the most famous people ever and you're like, fuck you. If only you knew my pain. Well, I'm going to bed. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, because I'm going to upload this on Monday, and then Friday, I'm going to make public, <sighs> at long last, the return of the movie therapist. Teddy has missed you. Have you missed Teddy? So until then, this has been, this has been Nathan Nile Official. I'm your host, Nathan Nile. Y'all have a great week now, you hear?